Hi, welcome to the math series, The Misunderstanding of Multiplicity. This channel is about multiple personality and uh, or what is called Dissociative Identity Disorder, DID. What was once called MPD and is now called, uh, excuse me, DID. Uh, I look at all media portrayals, misunderstandings, misconceptions, misinformation, uh, everything that comes out in book form, movie, true account, interview, uh, all of that. But I've been down with the flu, so I've been just kind of sitting back watching kind of the, the swirl going around. Uh, Sybil Exposed, a new book out by Debbie Nathan, and she's been doing quite a few uh, interviews and they're all out there for you to watch and listen to and links and transcripts and you can actually go to Amazon and read most of her book um, by doing the look inside and then the Kindle or whatever. Um, I previewed it on Kindle and ordered the hardback and my copy won't get here until uh, I think like the 27th or 20, between the 24th and the 27th, I think, because I didn't do the stamp, the shipping uh, correctly. But a friend of mine called me last night and he said, "Hey, you know, Marie, you know, you got, you guys know that the Civil Exposed was on NPR, and he was listening to it. And, yeah, yeah, I heard it. I was listening to it too. Um, and NPR always has a very spirited debate amongst the scientists. They have Science Friday." So they usually bring on doctors. So uh, Debbie Nathan was on being interviewed with Dr. McHugh, Dr. Paul McHugh, who is a staunch non-believer in, in multiple personality. Now, I think what really what Dr. McHugh is more against is the ISSTD, which I always applaud him for, but he kind of throws out the baby with the bad water. Um, Dr. McHugh has been very, very public about not under not how, how psychiatry psychiatry linked together trauma and disassociation and came up with other personalities and how that doesn't happen. Um, he also, but in explaining that, he talks about how the the founders of the ISSTD, the Institute uh, Society for Study of Disassociation and Trauma back in the late 80s and early 90s began with Dr. Braun and Bennett and Putman writing their big book about multiple personality and the Institute with Dr. Colin Ross, Dr. Richard Clough, Dr. Um, who else was there? There were quite a few doctors there at the time. Dr. Bennett, Braun, Putman, uh, Colin Ross, and Richard Clough. Those were like the big uh, granddaddies. One of them is escaping my brain right now. But, um, thankfully, <laughs> and um, so Debbie Nathan did an interview with NPR, but before that, the interview that I liked better <laughs> was an interview she did uh, with the uh, N NYWC, I think it was called, NY yeah, NYWC, on October 19th uh, with Leonard uh, LaPoe, which... Um, I like I like the threads and the commentary that's going on there. It, I like the two different interviews for two different reasons. Out here in the multiple community, there's been different camps of those that are really suffering with DID and really having this real disordered life where there's no co-communication, no co-consciousness, and there's always this struggle to integrate and forever therapy and hard work to integrate, to whittle their altars or people or whatever down to one, become whole, not be shattered or fractured in their mind or splintered, get their time back. And, and they really do experience their life this way. And then there's a group of people that coexist co-consciously that maybe they didn't always, maybe they had conflict at one time or another, had to work through some stuff in their background, some baggage, had to get to a more forward place, maybe in great times of stress is the only time their group 
operating, uh, functioning breaks down a little bit uh, and doesn't do as well. Um, maybe some look at their life as mystical and spiritualism and, and mediums and souls and others with them. Uh, or past life regression memories. I mean, on and on and on. There's all and, and there's all different views of multiplicity out there. And one thing, everyone is a lot of people. Not everyone. I should never say everyone. I should say a, the majority of a lot of people out there have agreed on is always saying, please don't confuse me with Sybil, the book Sybil, or the movie Sybil. So, because it's so horrendous, it's so pathological, it's so, it's, it's a, it's, it's Dr. Cornelius Wilbur's way of, of treating a patient, it's how everybody seemed to follow in suit of how Sybil was, it was like that's the only media portrayal we ever had, uh, after that was what was seen really, uh, beginning with Three Faces of Eve. Uh, where I don't think they got, I don't think back then when Three Faces of Eve came out, they could, they could really uh, put out anything as as drastic as as what we saw with Sybil with her memories and her views and trying to get them all together and, and what Debbie Nathan is pretty much saying in this book is that Florence Schreiber, the writer, who was originally a journalist in radio, drama radio, who was competing with daytime drama at the time, and true accounts and true stories and all that kind of stuff then, that she was brought on by Dr. Uh, Cornelius Wilbur, who knew her, and and told the story as it was, and then she got to know Sybil through, uh, or Shirley Ardell Mason, the late, aka Sybil Dorset, that she got to know her th through Dr. Wilbur, tapes and some interviews and uh, that a lot of the book was fiction it was not true it was it wasn't it was three women that created the personalities alters or people um, and conveniently put them all together when it was needed but they had, all of this comes out in the interviews and in the book but what's important to remember here is several things. Debbie Nathan was an investigative journalist in one of the biggest witch hunt daycare abuse stories out there back in the, that had to do with repressed memory. Uh, back in the 80s and 90s there was a lot of, um, a lot of, finally, finally people, children were, were reporting abuse. I don't know if you remember in the beginning of, of my channel I said there was a timeline that was really important and it, and it is when child abuse laws became allowable for a child to go tell a teacher a, a responsible other person a doctor and then for it to be even to be reported and take and be against the law um, as well as then came the repressed memories and then came the false memory syndrome association because there were so many parents and teachers and people being accused of doing things that some really didn't do. Um, so the, 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 there was a daycare that was very well known where all these people were getting locked up and uh, it was known as like the, the witch, witch hunt then and it was believed that, that the children were being coerced into saying things happened that never happened in the daycare. And um, this is the, the, the point of view that really that Debbie Nathan I believe is coming from and then looking at how these three women in the time period and with different diagnoses that were going on then that weren't recognized um, with Shirley Sybil having uh, a form of anemia that sometimes was confused with uh, symptoms of psych psychiatry, percutious, per I'm going to say it wrong, percutious anemia, I think it's called. Um, how her religion, being a Seventh day Adventist in a small town, 
didn't allow her to have an active imagination or role play, how in order to appease her mother she had to act a certain way. So there was a role that she portrayed to her mother that was okay, so that, that's what she portrayed to the doctor. And the doctor named that and then named functions. And so how Dr. Cornelius Wilbur was very interested in, in MPD and DID way back in the 30s and the 40s when most doctors were giving it up, saying, no, not too interested. And, and how she even, she, she was very much a scientist interested in this. And she gave information to Shirley to read nine years previous to seeing her again. So, but what's clear in the NPR interview and the WNYC interview is that Debbie Nathan is not denying that DID exists or that it's in the Diagnostic uh, Statistical Manual for, for Diagnosing Mental uh, Health Disorders. She is not denying that uh, people really do have multiple personality and the doctors on the show weren't denying that either um, but you got it you really got to read the threads and listen to the interviews all the way through I think the only person that really would fight it out would be Dr. McHugh um, I'm really interested to hear Dr. Uh, Patrick uh, Sarcucci I think his name is he called in during the NPR interview and uh, uh, challenged uh, Debbie Nathan. It's a it's because he knew uh, Shirley Ardell Mason, and he knew Florence Schreiber, and he knew the relationship that they all had. Dr. Wilbur too. So I've been kind of waiting for him to come out with his book. He's the man that owns uh, Shirley Ardell Mason, the late Shirley Ardell uh, Sybil's paintings, and knew of her business that she had and and all and it Debbie Nathan takes some real leaps in the book she's saying that these three women were romantically involved with each other that they knew they went too far uh, but they couldn't they couldn't fix it especially Florence Schreiber she never validated any of the abuse um, but then Debbie Nathan covers uh, that yes there is DID but in the case of Sybil uh, she believes that much of it was manufactured of it for media and for psychiatry profit um, so I'll put all the links up and uh, you can all go to all the different interviews or whatever and discuss it amongst yourselves <laughs> and I'm gonna go rest because I've got the flu and I, this is the first day I felt well enough to get up and get around again so um, thank you, Victor, for the reminder. I was going to, uh, I was going to do a video, but I was just going to wait till I had three books side by side with me and all the interviews lined up that I've seen. So NPR, WNYC, Civil Exposed by Debbie Nathan, doctors, professors, and and many lay people on the threads, and uh, it's all there for you. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Thanks.